Good morning. Welcome to the Bible reading time. Now we're going to read uh, Exodus chapter 11. Can you see the Exodus chapter 11, verse 1? Now the Lord said to Moses, I will bring one more plague on Pharaoh and on Egypt. After that, he will let you go from here and where when he does, uh, he will drive you out completely. You know, God prophesied for Israelite and then nine judgment, nine plagues. You know, nine plague, nine plague is uh, is done, and then God say one more. In total, how many? Ten. What does it mean ten? Yeah, it's a full, 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 full number. And then God, what is the main purpose of uh, this uh, plague? The the main purpose of uh, this uh, this uh, pledge, and then look at the uh, chapter nine verse uh, fifteen. Yeah, this is the purpose of uh, this old uh, plague. For by now I could have uh, stretched out my hand and struck you and your people with a plague that would have uh, wiped you of the earth. Verse sixteen. Yeah, Exodus chapter 9 verse 16 but I have raised you up for this very purpose that I might show you my power that my name might be proclaimed in all the earth God wants to show his mighty power Yeah, he wants to show the mighty power there is no one like almighty God our God God wants to show and then his name mighty Yeah, his name is wonderful his name is awesome. And be proclaimed in all the earth. That is the main purpose. Do you understand? When God judges the whole world, that means God is the one to receive the all the glory and honor and power. Yeah, the tenure of the place is the punishment, isn't it? Yeah, punishment, yeah. Do you understand? Enemy wicked people wicked people like the you know you know, out of Hitler. Yeah. This kind of people, when they get the punishment, yeah, so like the Haman in the Bible, wicked people, they try to kill all the Jewish people, and then when they get the punishment, what will happen? They know that there is God, yeah. And um, if you see the very interesting scripture, if you see, look at the chapter fourteen, Exodus chapter fourteen, verse four. <coughs> God wants to receive the glory and honor and power through your life. Yeah? You agree? Yeah? Amen. Yeah? But sometimes, two times, God wants to receive the glory through the enemy, wicked people. Do you know that? Look at the verse, chapter, Exodus chapter 14, verse 4. I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and he will pursue them, but I will gain glory for myself. Through whom? Through whom? No. You need to look at the Bible. Moses or Pharaoh? Pharaoh, can you say? Exodus chapter 14, verse 4, you need to understand the Bible. God said, I will gain my glory. Yeah, I will gain glory for myself. Through what? No Moses, through Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine? All his army. Whose army? Pharaoh's army. And Egyptian will know that I am the Lord. Mm -hmm. So the Israelite did this. Uh, did this. You see? God wants to receive the glory and honor and power through enemy. Do you understand? When the enemy is so wicked, but still God wants to receive the glory and honor and power. Yeah, it's very. Do you understand that God received? God gained His glory for Himself through King Pharaoh. Yeah. Who is the conductor? Is the King Pharaoh's heart? Who is the one to control King Pharaoh's heart? Satan or God? God. God hard on the King Pharaoh's heart. Can you imagine? And then God punished the King Pharaoh. Therefore, you have to humble ourselves before God. God control everything. God is in control. Look at the chapter eleven, chapter eleven, verse four. So Moses said, "This is what the Lord says about the Midian. I will go 
throughout the Egypt. Every firstborn son in Egypt will die. From the first son of a Pharaoh who sit on the throne to the first son of the slave girl who is at her hand meal, and the first of the firstborn of the cattle as well. Can you imagine every firstborn yeah, of a son and firstborn of an animal also died? This is the judgment of the law. Yeah. Verse 9. Chapter 11, God already speaks about the final judgment. Before the number 10 judgment, yeah, you have to prepare. God will destroy the firstborn of sons and the firstborn of animals as well, which means God has got the absolute, absolute control. Do you understand? God control everything, absolutely. And verse 9, the Lord said to Moses, A Pharaoh will refuse to listen to you, so that my wonders may be multiplied in Egypt. Do you understand? Moses, listen to me. King Pharaoh, no listen to you. Therefore, to the King Pharaoh, yeah, I, my, I may explain. I want to raise up my more wonders. Yeah, multiplied in Egypt. And chapter 12. Chapter 12 is the most important chapter. Why? Because of Passover. Passover. When every year there is Passover, yeah? When Passover starts this year? Anybody knows? 22nd. 22nd. But how many days Passover ceremony? Seven days. Which is uh, 30th, yeah? 30th. 22nd start and um, then uh, night, night time and then 30th will be will be finished seven days according to the scripture you know how many days the ceremony seven days in in Exodus chapter 12 look at Exodus chapter 12 verse 4 if any household is too small for the whole lamb they must share one with their nearest neighbor uh, uh, having taken into the account the number of people there are. You are the determined the amount of lamb needed in accordance with what each person will eat. You know, God wants to destroy all the firstborn in Egypt, but God wants to save the Jewish people. Verse 5. The animals you choose must be ear all the males without the defect. And you may take them from the sheep or the goat. You must kill yeah, the lamb. Under the one year lamb, one year sheep we call the lamb. Yeah? After one year we call the what? Sheep. Sheep. And then you can kill. Uh, anybody knows that Jesus here the last supper? Why here the Last Supper? Anybody knows? He had the uh, dinner together with the disciples. And then he say, I'm the what? Lamb of God. Which means Jesus had the Last Supper. Which date? Passover. Passover. Passover day. <coughs> Can you imagine? When was the, when was the Easter? Three weeks ago, something like three, three, four weeks ago. But well, actually, Jesus died on the cross. Yeah, when Jesus died on the cross, Jesus uh, he is the sacrificial lamb. Yeah, Jesus he had the last supper when when. Day. Yeah, which is a uh, Passover. Do you understand? Day before Passover. Yeah. Do you know Jesus? I mean, God explained about the. Uh, about the Passover, you have to eat the what? Eat unleavened blood, uh, unleavened bread, not yeast. And then also you need to eat the lamb. And then look at the look at the <coughs> verse seven. Then they are taken some of the blood and put in on the shed, sorry side and top of the door frames of the houses. 
where they eat the lamb. Do you know when they when the angel saw the lamb, uh, when they when the angel saw the blood of the lamb on the door frames, and um, the angel of the Lord pass over this uh, this judgment, pass over these people. And look at verse eight. The same night they are to eat the meat lost over the fire along with the bitter herbs, and then bread made without the yeast. What does the meaning of bitter herbs? Anybody knows? There is a meaning. Yeah, this is similar about bitter herbs. You know, Jewish people they had uh, beaten by this uh, master, uh, Egyptian master. The symbolic meaning is uh, you have a bit bitterness. Uh, you have the you know so sorrow in in Egypt for four hundred thirty years because you stay in this world, you stay in the Egypt, uh, you know, like slave. That is mean of uh, bitter herbs. And bread made without yeast. It's uh, without yeast is not very testable. Yeah. And look at verse nine. Do not eat the meat raw or cooked in the water. No, don't do it. But roast it over the fire. Uh, head, legs, and the inner part. You have to do it like a grill. Yeah, by fire. Verse ten. Do not leave any of it till morning. If some is left till morning, you must burn it. Everything finish. Yeah, don't leave anything. This is uh, the preparation. How you prepare for the the Passover? How you come out from the the Egypt? And verse eleven. This is how you are to eat it with your cloak uh, tucked into your belt. Your sandal on your feet and your staff in your hand. Eat in the hash. It uh, is a Lord's Passover. And do you, do you understand? This is a very very important uh, uh, ceremony for Jewish people. Passover. And verse thirteen: The blood will be signed for you on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. No destruction pledge will touch you when I strike Egypt. When I see the blood, when I see the blood, when I see the blood, I will pass, I will pass over you. Have you heard about this song? No, no. It's a beautiful song. <laughs> when I see the blood, when I see the blood. When I see the blood, I will pass. I will pass over you. Then the angel of the Lord see the blood of the Lamb on the door post, door door frame. The judgment of the Lord not coming. Yeah, the blood of the Lamb. And look at the verse twenty-two. Take a branch of a hyssop, dip into the blood in the Basin and put some of the blood on the top and the both side of the door frame. Not one of you shall go out the door of his house until morning. You understand? This is an instruction. If you come out from this house, you will die. That kind of message. Be careful when I say it like this. And verse twenty-five: When you enter the land, what kind of land? Which land? Yeah. Promised land, promised land, Canaan. When you enter the promised land, yeah, the Lord will give you as a promise. Observe this ceremony. What kind of ceremony? Passover. You see, how many years uh, did uh, these uh, Jewish people keep this Passover up to now? Can you calculate? Yeah, around three thousand four hundred. Can you imagine? Three thousand four hundred ceremony. Passover is the biggest ceremony for Jewish people. Yeah, now this week, Passover day. Passover week. Can you see them? Verse twenty-six. When your children ask you, "What does this Passover ceremony? Yeah, what does it mean?" and tell them, it is a Passover sacrifice to the Lord, who passed 
over the house of Israelite in Egypt and spared our homes when he struck down the Egyptians. You know, if the Jewish people, they, they believe that the Old, Te Old Testament properly, they will meet Jesus. Do you know why Jewish people, they don't believe Jesus? They don't understand the near meaning of Passover. Who is a Passover lamb? Jesus. Jesus. He had, a, he had a dinner together with the disciples, and next day he died. Do you understand? Jesus, he himself, become a lamb of God and Passover. And look at verse 29. At the midnight, the Lord struck down all the firstborn in Egypt, from the firstborn of a parrot who sat on the throne, and to the firstborn of a prisoner who was in the uh, dungeon, and the firstborn of all the livestock as well. Do you understand? God killed every firstborn in Egypt. And then this man, King Pharaoh, and the least. Yeah. Can you see the verse 31? During the night, Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron and said, Up, oh, leave my people, you and the Israelites. Go, worship the Lord as you have a request. Take your flock and herd as you have said, and go. And so also what he said, he blessed me, he said. Can you imagine, this King Pharaoh, he asked uh, Moses Aaron, now leave me alone. You can go now. Yeah? You can go with your what? Flocks and herds. But verse 36 is a very interesting scripture. Look, the Lord had made the uh, Egyptian favorably displeased, uh, disposed uh, for the people, and they gave them what they asked for. And they plundered the Egyptian. Every good thing they give, do you understand? They come out with what? Silver and gold and all the animals. Look at the verse 36, 37. Exodus chapter 11, 37. The Israelites journey from the Lamez and Sukkot. They were about 600,000 men on foot beside women and children. Can you calculate 600,000 men with their wife and children? Guess how many at least? 700. No. Do you know 600,000 uh, husband, 600,000 wife, which is uh, 1.2 million, yeah? And at least uh, two children, how many? Yeah? Per household, two children. It's easy to over, go over the two million. Easy. Can you imagine? Two million move out. Two million move out from one country. It's not easy, job. Over 3,400 years ago, it was happening. This is amazing. Look at the verse 40. Now the length of time the Israelite the people lived in Egypt, how many years? 430 years. Who is the open door for Jewish people to settle in Egypt? Joseph. 430 years ago, Joseph, he went to there and he became a uh, prime minister of Egypt. And do you know what happened? 430 years later, now God used the Moses to come out. Yeah, look at verse 41, at the end of the 40, 430 years to the very day. All the Lord's division left Egypt. 430 years later, and God promised with Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and his people left the, the slave country, Egypt. Look at verse 47. The whole community of Israel must celebrate it. About what? Passover. You have to celebrate this Passover. Yeah? And then chapter 13. Verse 3, then Moses said to people, commemorable this, and they you came out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery, because of the Lord brought you out of it with a mighty hand, eat nothing containing yeast. 
remember. Yeah, you have the you remember and memory of this day we call the Passover day. What Jesus, what sorry, what God has done for you. You come out from this uh, slavery country, land of slavery. Now you are free. Look at the verse six. For seven days eat uh, bread made without yeast, and on the seventh day hold a festival to the Lord. How many days? How many days festival? Seven days. Seven days. Seven days. <coughs> now we is they start on twenty second and finish on thirties. Do you understand? This is an amazing ceremony for Jewish people, and then this is amazing. Celebration. Look at the verse 14. In days to come, when you your son ask you, what does this mean? Say to him, with a mighty hand, the Lord brought us out of Egypt, out of land of slavery. Yeah, you shall know the truth. Truth set you free. Yeah, Jesus is the truth. Jesus will set you free. Yeah, you don't need to be a slave slave anymore. Yeah, I no longer slave to the fear. No more, no more slave. And verse sixteen, and it'll be like a what sign on your hand and symbol on your forehead that the Lord brought us out of Egypt with His mighty hand. Yeah, what does the meaning of uh, uh, what is the purpose of a ten pledge? Yeah, God wants to show the mightiest power. Yeah, and that God is the one to receive the glory. And look at the verse 19. Moses took the bones of Joseph with him because of Joseph had made the sons of the Israel swore on out. He will say he had said, God will surely come to your aid, and then you must carry my bones up with. You you from this place. How many years ago Joseph spoke to spoke to his uh, his family? Four hundred thirty years ago. Can you look at the uh, Genesis chapter 20, uh, fifty twenty five? Genesis chapter fifty, uh, verse twenty five say. <clears throat> Genesis chapter fifty, verse twenty five. Joseph made the sons of Israel swear on earth and said, God will surely come to your aid, and then you must carry my bones up from this place. Can you imagine? This man, jo Joseph, before he died, he asked the disciples, his people, you must carry my bones. How many years later is it fulfilled? 430 years later. Actually, Moses he he took the bones of the Joseph, and who is the one to carry the, these bones to ins inside of the Promised Land? No, Joshua, because Moses he died. Look at the Joshua chapter twenty-four and thirty-two. Joshua, Joshua chapter twenty-four, yeah, which is the uh, last uh, chapter. Verse thirty-two. I think it's including the forty years, four hundred seventy years later, yeah, because the forty years in the wilderness, isn't it? Therefore, four hundred thirty plus forty years, which is four hundred seventy years later, almost five hundred years later, this bones of Joseph move into the Promised Land. Look at the Joshua chapter twenty-four, verse thirty-two. Can you read together? One, two, three. And Joseph's born, which the Israelite they had brought up from Egypt, were buried at Shechem in the tract of land that Jacob brought for the hundred pieces of silver from the sons of Hamor and the father of Shechem. This has become the inheritance of Joseph's descendant. Can you see that? Four hundred thirty years later, this man Joseph's born uh, come out from land of Egypt. And how many years the Jewish people stay in the desert? Forty years. In total, how many years? Four seventy. <laughs> Can you imagine? According to the description, this bone, Joseph's bone, yeah, buried in where? Shechem. Shechem. 
in Israel. Yeah, this is a Medi. That is why people of God, people of Israel, is we call the people of promise, people of covenant. Yeah. And look at the verse. Uh, uh, Exodus chapter thirteen, verse twenty-one. By day, they the Lord went ahead of them in a pillar of cloud, and to guide them on their way. And by the night, a pillar of fire to give them light, so that they could travel by day and the night. Why the pillar of cloud led the uh, led the Israelite in the daytime? Anybody knows? Pillar of cloud is a very shadow, yeah, calm and quiet, and then shadow is cool. In the daytime in Middle East is very very hot, very hot. In the nighttime in desert is very very cold. In the nighttime, yeah. Therefore, pillar of fire, yeah, warm them, guide them. As God is gracious, and look at the chapter fourteen. It's an amazing story. Chapter fourteen about the legacy open. But look at the verse four. Exodus chapter fourteen verse four say. I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and he will pursue them. But I will gain glory for myself through whom? Through whom? Through Pharaoh, and he all his army. And the Egyptian will know that I am the Lord. So the Israelites did this. Can you imagine? God is the glory through whom? Pharaoh. Is it possible God gained the glory through Kim Jong Un? Kim Jong Un, have you heard about Kim Jong Un, dictator of North Korea? Is it possible God can get the glory through Mr. Putin? Yeah, it's possible. Is it possible God can gain the glory through Stone? Stone? Yeah, <laughs> he can do anything. If you don't shouting, your son, your son, I think for God, you know, God command the son. Is it possible Stone preach the gospel? <laughs> possible? Is it possible? Donkey yeah. preach the gospel. Donkey? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Do you know any any scripture? Donkey speak. Yeah. <laughs> God can do anything. Therefore, you need to humble yourself. Yeah. yeah. You have to humble yourself. God can do anything. You and me, we have to humble ourselves. Can you imagine? God said, "I will gain glory for myself through peril." And his all army. This is our God. Look at verse eight. Yeah, verse eight. The Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, so that he pursued the Israelites who were marching out boldly. Yes, and then God is in control. God is in control. Yeah, look at verse ten. As a Pharaoh approached. The Israelites looked up, and there were the Egyptians marching after them. They were terrified and cried out to the Lord. You know, when you have some difficulties and hardship, yeah, what is your reaction? What is you? How you react? Cry out to God. Look what they say. Call upon me. I will tell you and great and such things you do not know. You understand when you have some some pressure, some some press, some difficulties and sufferings, hardship. What you need to do is you know you have to cry out, cry out to the Lord because they are terrified. And look at the verse twelve. Didn't we we say to you in Egypt, leave us alone, let us serve the Egyptian. It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptian than to die in desert. Who say that? It's a light. Why? <laughs> they they gonna die by this uh, you know uh, army of uh, Egyptian, army of peril. <laughs> Do you understand? Don't be terrified. Don't be complain like this man. These people, they say, "Oh, we are much better for us to die in in in, you know, in Egypt." 
they say it's much better we serve serve the Egyptian. Do you understand? They used to be a slave in the land of Egypt, but they want to be a slave again. Can I encourage you? You come out from darkness. Do you want to go back to your orderly life again? No. Do you want to s become a slave again? No. Slave of sin, slave of drugs and alcohol, all kind of addiction. Don't do it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. No more, no more. But these people say, oh, leave us alone. Let us serve the Egyptian. They speak like that. It's terrible. Terrible. Never say it like this. But look at the verse 13. Moses answered the people, Do not be afraid. Stand firm, and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptian you see today, we, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for us, you and me. You need to only be still. Can you read together verse 14, 1, 2, 3? The Lord will fight for you. And you need to only to be still. Stand still. You have to, then you have to, you have to have the eyes of a faith. Do you understand? Moses, he look at the circumstance with the eyes of God. That is why he said that the Lord will fighting for us. Therefore, you need only to be still. Don't be afraid. Verse sixteen. Rise your staff. You know what God said, rise your staff. The staff is a staff of God. Stretch out your hand over the sea to divide the water so that Israelite can go through the sea on which ground? Yeah. Dry ground. Is it possible to dry ground? It's possible. Do you understand? There's a full of water. But dry is taking time, isn't it? But God said you will work on the dry ground. It's not wonderful news. Yeah? And verse 18. The Egyptians will know that I am the Lord when I gain glory through Pharaoh, his chariot, and his horsemen. God speak again. I will gain the glory for myself through Egyptian people, through King Pharaoh. Verse 20. Coming between the armies of Egypt, Egypt and Israelite, and throughout the night the cloud brought the darkness to the one side and light to the other side. So neither went near near the other all night long. Then Moses stretched out his hand. You see, he stretched out his hand over the sea. Which sea is he? Red Sea. And all that night the Lord drove the sea back with a strong east wind and turned it into dry land. The waters were divided. Can you imagine? The waters are divided. And then they see the dry ground. How many believe that God opened the Red Sea? Yeah. you never seen like that. But you can believe. You see. Look. Verse uh, 22. The Israelites went through the sea on dry ground with a whirl of water on their right and on their left. Have you seen the, the world of water? Is it possible the, what, the, the, the water make a world? I mean, you can see the world. Is it possible? <laughs> Do you understand? You need some glass or whatever you can see. Yeah? But this is amazing. One left, one right. And in the middle, they dry ground. This is our God. Amen. This is our God, your God, my God. Look at the verse 22, sorry, 24. During the last watch of the night, the Lord looked down from the pillar of a fire and cloud at the Egyptian army and thrown into the confusion. Yes? God do everything, actually, by himself. E Egyptian people, they're confusion. Something wrong. And look, he made the wheels of their chariot to come out come off. Who, who, who did like that? God. So that they had a difficulty driving. And Egyptians said, let's get 
striving and then do you know what they say let, let get away from get, let get away from the Israelite the Lord is fighting for them against mm -hmm. Israel who say that Egyptian, Egyptian. <laughs> can you say that? can you imagine Egyptian knew the Lord God God of Israel fighting for them yeah and against the Egypt and they say let get away from Israelite do you understand they knew Almighty God against uh, Egypt and Almighty God working for Israelite and then look at the verse 28 the water flow back and cover the chariot and horsemen the entire army of Pharaoh had a and that had followed the Israelite into the sea. How many people survived? None. Not one of them survived. Can you imagine? None. This is our God. All the Egyptian army, horsemen, they who are, you know, is like a special soldier. At least how many? 600. At least 600. More than 600, actually. Some chariot of the two people uh, stand. Therefore, at least uh, over 600 people died. None of them survived. Verse 29. But the Israel went through the sea on dry ground with a wall of water on their right and on their left. It's not wonderful. Enemy died, but the people of God, they survived. Not only survived, they enjoyed the uh, you know, goodness of God. Verse 31. When the Israelites saw the great power the Lord displayed against the Egyptian. The people fear the Lord. Can you say amen? amen? This is a great news. People fear the Lord and put their trust in Him and in Moses, His servant. You see, too. They fear God, it's good news. And they, they trust in God and trust in leader. Do you understand? We need trust in God, trust in Jesus. Finally, Chapter 15, what they do? They sing the beautiful songs, the song of Moses and Miriam. Verse 2, the Lord is my strength, my song. He has become my salvation. He is my God, I will praise him. My Father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a warrior, warrior and the Lord is his name. His most powerful name, name of God. Verse 11, who among the God is like you, O Lord? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in glory, working wonders? This is my God and your God and our God. Verse 18, the Lord will reign and forever and ever. Verse 19, Exodus chapter 15, when Pharaoh's horses, chariot, and horsemen went into the sea, the Lord brought the waters of the sea back over them, put the Israelite walk through the sea on dry ground. Moses he made these beautiful songs. And then look at the verse, uh, verse 22. So 21, Miriam sang to them, sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted. The horse is rider has he has a hull, hull out into the sea. God is the Lord enemy. And verse 23, when they came to Mara, they could not drink it water because it was bitter. That is why the place is called Mara. Can you imagine they saw the amazing miracles? Yeah, they survived from enemy of God, from this uh, Egyptian. When they arrive in Promised Land, what they see? problem come. The water should be sweet and then drinkable water. But what water did? Bitter. We cannot drink. Do you understand? You have the great victory. After victory, do you think uh, there's no more no more war? No more battle? Yes or no? <laughs> Another trouble waiting for you. It's a good news for you. Can you say thank you Jesus? Thank you Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> They are so excited. Yeah, praise God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We cross the Red Sea. The water is bitter. We cannot drink in water. This is our life. 
give thanks. Amen. Amen. Trust in Jesus. And look, they, do you know what they do? Look, verse 24. So people grumbled against Moses, saying, What are you, we to drink? Do you, do you, can you see that? Chapter, chapter 14, verse 31. People trust in God and trust in Moses, his servant. But what they do now? Grumble to against whom? Moses. This is human being. Do you understand? Yesterday, some pa some people come to me, Pastor Paul, you are doing very well, well done, well done, well done. and today you become my enemy. <laughs> How can I deal with these people? I know one guy, he's a wonderful man, he, he prayed together with me. He said, Pastor Paul, thank you. Do you know what happened? He become homosexual. Terrible. That is why we have to watch out. Yeah? Watch out. Keep your salvation. With what? You and trembling. Another, another missionary. Oh, first of all, we pray together. And then, from last week, he became my enemy. What shall I say? Do I need to attack him? I just pray to God. Thanks be to God. Some other guy is dealing with him now. Look, these people, they, chapter 14, look at the Exodus chapter 14, verse 31. And uh, verse 31, people fear God, yeah? And put their trust in God. It's good, yeah? And trust in Moses as well. Do you understand that? They respect God and fear God and respect Moses. But now they change their mind. Chapter, four, chapter 15, verse 24, people grumbled against Moses, saying, what are you we to drink? Then Moses cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a piece of, piece, piece of wood, and he threw it into the water, and the water become what? Sweet. <laughs> Do you understand? This is our life. Our life is like up and down, like a wave of a sea. Sometimes it's very nice, sometimes it's very bad. But you should trust in God. Amen. Trust in Jesus. Please don't blame. Stop complaining. Don't grumble to against somebody. Stop it. Look. They enjoy now. There the Lord made a decree and the law for them that there is a test to them. He said, if you listen carefully to the voice of the Lord, your God, and do what is right in his eyes, if you pay attention to his command, and keep all these decrees. I will not bring on you any of what? Any of disease. I brought on the Egypt, for I am the Lord who heals you. Jehovah Lapha. Have you heard about Jehovah Lapha? He is our healer. Do you know there's a conditionally you receive healing? What can I say? If you want. If you, care, if you listen carefully to the voice of God, yeah? Yeah, if you pay attention to his command and keep all his decree, what does it mean keep? Obey, obey. Listen carefully what I say to you and obey and you will be healed. Yeah. Simple. Trust and obey. Then they came to Elim. Have you heard of the Elim denomination? It's a Pentecost denomination in, in UK. Where there were twelve spring and seventy palm trees, and they camped there near the water. Today, according to the scripture, you can enjoy what you can enjoy the uh, your life when you listen carefully to Almighty God and obey, pay attention, pay attention to His commandment. Yeah. And they keep his keep all his command. And if you do it, God say, I will bring not any disease, no more disease, I want to heal the sick. The will of God for you and me heal the sick. Yeah. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. You made heaven and earth by your word. When you say, Let there be light, there was light. Lord, recreate us by your word. Lord, you promised with us, uh, Job Alapha, you are our healer. You don't bring any 
sickness in uh, in our body because we listen what you say we obey what you say and then we are healed Jesus was wound and we are healed can you touch your sick body of your body now you can touch in the name of Lord Jesus any pain I command you go away from their body in Jesus name don't you know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit Lord forgive all our sins we commit the sins by our thought, our eyes, our mouth, our ear, our hand, our behavior. Forgive all our sins right now. And then by the blood of Lord Jesus, and then because of what Jesus was wound, and we are healed. Be healed right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Give the cloud of the blood of Jesus. Blessed be the name of the Lord.